What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Torino career mode. This is episode number 67 and we start today's episode off by seeing that Masaccio got an injury whilst away on an international duty with Argentina and he's going to be out for two days. Didn't really matter because he was okay to play in this game against Dudenez but of course he wasn't really on international duty was he because he was still part of our match day squads for the game against Milan and also the game against Dortmund in which he played in. So yeah in the last episode we discussed about the, the bug that EA gave us by taking away three of our players yet we were still able to put them on the bench which was kind of ridiculous but either way it doesn't matter now it's over and uh, and there you go so we take on Udinese for the first game of today's episode here or Udinese I should say always pronounce that wrong uh, for the first game of today's episode here in the Serie A and the first chance fell to us but that header hit the bar and eventually the away side cleared and in the 25th minute here we did open the scoring through Manolo Gabbiadini I tried to slide it through towards a Mobley first town but it came straight back to Gabbiadini who pops the ball in and makes it Torino 1 Udinese nil so good finish by Gabbiadini there that's now his sixth goal in the Serie A so far this season as you can see got a little bit fortunate with that one but either way nothing fortunate about the finish a really good strike and the captain for the day makes it Torino 1 Udinese nil in the 32nd minute a good chance of the wayside to Graham tells the equalizing goals for only gets on the ball and finds Fernandez but his header goes harmlessly wide at the post and behind for a goal kick so still 1-0 and just past half time mark another good chance for Udinese here to get themselves inside Pereira takes the shot but Bernie tips it behind for a corner and keeps it at 1-0. So the away side weren't playing badly in this game whatsoever. And they were creating a lot of chances. But Bernie was making a couple of good saves in succession. There was another really good one there. And he was making sure that he was holding on to his clean sheet. And it was still 1-0. Another good chance for Udinese here. This uh, cross uh, got deflected off Masaccio and almost found the back of the net. Thankfully went to the side net and in behind for a corner. But it was still 1-0. In the 71st minute, a good chance to make it 2-0. Here is a Mobley comes forward to shoot. But it's a really good save by the goalkeeper. And eventually Udinese get the ball away. So still 1-0 to the home side and Udinese still in the game with 15 minutes to go here. As they go down the right hand side, Muriel's on the ball. He crosses the ball to the far post and the header goes just wide of the post and behind for a goal kick. So pressure was beginning to look like it might pay off for Udinese in this game. They were getting very, very close as the minutes were ticking by. I was wondering, would we, would we be able to hold on for a 1-0 scoreline or would we need to go into attack mode and try and kill the game off with a second goal? Interesting tactical decision, what I would decide to do. Well, I decide to go attacking, try and get ourselves our second goal. Really went for it and as Sergio Aguero gets played forward, here he takes it around his man with Ronaldo chop and it's a really nice finish by Sergio into the back of the net and he makes it Torino to Udinese nil so offense is the best defense sometimes it's a really nice finish by Aguero Ronaldo chopping around the man and that killed the contest off because Udinese you know as, as time was going on I was thinking they're probably going to score eventually as they were looking really really threatening so I thought I'll get myself forward try and create and carve out a chance and I'm pretty confident of one of Aguero or Immobile will take it it turned out to be the former Aguero pops it in and makes it Torino to Udinese nil. And it was how the game would finish as well. That did indeed kill it as a contest. And as you can see, Udinese had more possession, three less shots, yes, and apparently only two on target. But I didn't think that was right at all. But we did hold on for the win. Uh, my man, the match went to Masashi. I thought he was really solid at the back in that game and was very, very uh, composed at the back when we needed him to be. So another victory for Torino and another clean sheet for Bernie as well. Only letting 11 league goals so far this season. How about that? But uh, still following now, we had a couple of scouting updates from our scouts currently based in Italy and Brazil I have to say I'm pretty disappointed you know we had some great players picked up in the first uh, the uh, the first season or was it the first season or the, the second season well last season anyway he picked up some great players for us and I think the season before that we had a few months worth of scouting as well and we got a few players picked up to our academy this season there's been like what one or possibly two signings I can recall promoting to our academy like there's been there's been very very few let's just say that that have uh, looked stand out in the scout report so I'm pretty disappointed to be honest but what can you do uh, still, we take on Cagliari for the second game of today's episode here, the second and final game of today's episode. And the first chance would fall to the home side here is Masaccio, who won player in the match in the last game, almost gifted Cagliari the opening. For some reason, the pass was really short there, and thankfully the shot went into the side netting and behind for a goal kick. And in the 33rd minute, another good chance for the home side to take the lead. I pushed too many bodies forward, they came forward to shoot, but it goes wide to the post and behind for a goal kick. So still goalless in this game, but the start really was bright from Cagliari. You know, they were the underdogs in this game, no doubt about it. They were looking really bright early on. Marco Sal find his man here who shoots and just put, puts the ball off target behind for a goal kick so still nil nil but 
A lot of early chances for the home side in this game as we were struggling to defend, really, and uh, basically just put a stop to all their attacks. But it was still 0-0. But from the goal kick, we pass out from the back as per usual. Florenzi finds a Mobley. Back towards Florenzi down the left-hand side. Takes it around his man. Goes inside to cross the ball into the centre. Picks out a Mobley. But he blasts the ball over the bar and behind for a goal kick. So still 0-0 going into the break. And the final chance of the half would fall to Cagliari, who were looking the better side in the first half as they get themselves inside here with Ekdal chipping it to the far post. De Sena goes for goal, but he can't hit the target and it goes behind for a goal kick. So still Cagliari 0-0, Torino 0, but five minutes after the restart, a good chance for us to take the lead. Sergio Aguero takes it round one, takes it round two, and keeps on going through one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. This is a superb save by Colombi, and he gets it away for a throw. So still, uh, still Cagliari 0, Torino 0, as Aguero did the hard work but couldn't get the finish right. So still 0-0, but a few minutes later we get the ball inside towards Gabbiadini. He finds Hakan Shalanolu, but it's a good stop by the goalkeeper again and eventually Cagliari clear. So still 0-0 in this game. The first half was all about Cagliari, but the second half was all about Torino. Just 13 minutes after the restart, we were getting ourselves uh, constantly inside. Hakan comes forward for another strike here, but again, it's the same result. Colombi makes a really good save, and eventually Aguero is penalised for a foul, and it's still 0-0. So the goalkeeper, Colombi, looking really, really good in this game, and we just couldn't seem to beat him. But from the free kick, we win the ball back here. Danilo plays it through towards Motto, flicks it on towards uh, his man, Aguero, then towards Gabby Yadini, then towards Immobile, really nice build up here, Immobile crosses the ball in, picks out Gab Yadini, and it's a really bad miss as he puts the ball wide at the post and behind for a goal kick, so still Cagliari nil, Torino nil. And in the 73rd minute, a good chance for Cagliari to grab themselves the opening goal of the game. They get the ball inside towards David Villa. Eventually, a shot comes in from just outside the area, but it's off target and behind for a goal kick. So still 0-0 in this game, and Cagliari showing us that they weren't just going to be settling for a point, and they wanted all three. But in the 81st minute, yet another good chance for Torino to steal all three points late on. Keita whips in across, and this header by a story, a backwards header, almost finds the back of his own net, but it does go behind for a corner. So still 0-0, and from the corner, Shalanolu crosses the ball in, it's headed away, only as far as Gabby Adini, who goes for goal from range and how close was that? Just wide the post and behind for a goal kick, so still 0-0 in this game, and in stoppage time, Cagliari won themselves a corner, Bernie catches it and just launches the ball forward, he knows Sergio Aguero is forward, so he launches it forward for him to run onto, Capuano's trying to catch up here, but Aguero gets to it first, Berber spins round the centre-back, who takes him down, and the referee awards a penalty to the away side in stoppage time, and the number 34 free can complain all he likes but he knows that that is a penalty as he takes down our Argentine striker and he's not happy about it whatsoever but there was clear contact and the referee gives a penalty to Torino so a great chance from the spot to make it Cagliari nil Torino one as Sergio Aguero has the chance to win the game for us late on in stoppage time after winning the penalty as well so it's going to be Sergio Aguero against the goalkeeper who we've been trying to get the better of all game that kept on making save after save Who's going to come out on top, Aguero or Colombi? Well, it's going to be Sergio Aguero. He's been worth every single penny so far since coming in. £45 million, I know, an expensive transfer, but for one of the best strikers in the world, he's got off to a very impressive start. I've been totally fine paying that fee, and I think I'll still have that um, still have that view on the transfer fee for a very long time. Aguero, ice in his veins, sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, makes it Torino, uh, sorry, Cagliari nil, Torino won. That's now his fourth goal in the Serie A, so far and as you can see it was basically the last chance of the game as the referee blew for full time right from kickoff so final score Cagliari nil Torino won another win notched up for Torino would have been very disappointed to leave that game with only the one point because I did, I did feel like we deserved it even though Cagliari did play quite well themselves they weren't really accurate with their shooting whereas we were and if it wasn't for Colombi who did win player of the game making save after save we probably would have won by two or three goals either way delighted to get the win Aguero does settle it in stoppage time with that penalty and as you can see right here the media are taking note and not a real surprise what a start to his Torino career so far four goals in five games uh, regardless as you can see following that one of our youth players wanted to terminate his contract which is always a bit of a shame to see especially when I'm trying to wait until May to promote him so Agazi has 86 to 92 potential 67 to 71 overall so I just thought you know what let's promote him not worth uh, the risk of losing him and he'll come into the first team a couple months earlier than we would have liked either way we uh, offer him a contract and wait to see what he says 
And also we have a squad report as well, so you can see how the players are currently doing. And as you'll also see as well, Sergio Aguero has hit 90 as well. So he's only been here for a couple of months, or just over a month actually now, as he just entered March, and he's already hit 90 overall. So it's safe to say that, you know, I I've said it a few times, and I'll say it again, and you guys must get sick of me saying this, but it was a shame selling Dybala because of the future he could have had, and, you know, with him being one of the best young strikers in the world, in the game, and being a real prospect for us and everything, but Aguero's come in, and he's already hit 90. He'll, hit, he'll be 29 in a couple of months in June, don't get me wrong, but, uh, yeah, I think he's been worth every single penny so far, and I'm sure he'll continue to do so, because I believe that he is the difference between us winning uh, more titles and more trophies, as opposed to us still being being a sort of a, a nearly but not quite ready yet team. I think we are ready now to take the next level, uh, take the next step with Torino. Regardless, that does any episode, guys. So as always, a big thank you for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you're enjoying today's episode of Torino Career Mode, then please do leave a like because it's much appreciated and it really does help my channel out. But of course, you don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Torino Career Mode very soon.